Hi! Today is March 18th. We're walking through the Bible, reading the One Year Bible. And it's the New Living Translation. We're answering the questions, who am I, who is God, and what the heck are we doing together? The who am I is easy to answer scripturally. Genesis 1.27 said that we are created in God's image, male and female. He created them in his image. And in Exodus chapter 3, he tells us that I am that I am when Moses asked who he was. And he's capital letters. And if we are created in his image, we are lowercase letters. I am. That's our identity. Now, evolution has um, threatened the truth of this, this uh, scriptural fact of creation. And I would encourage you to look up the Christian apologetics for creation. Answers in Genesis is a great organization that scientifically combats the understanding that evolution is true. And we do believe reading the Bible that God created the heavens and the earth, and then he created everything in them, including us. And he created us in his image that gives us identity. Jesus Christ, there's great historical evidence for the authenticity of the manuscripts that give his testimony. There were eyewitness accounts that Jesus Christ not only died, he was resurrected and he lives forever. And he gave us value because of his sacrifice. So we have identity and value if we believe the Holy Scriptures. If we do not believe the Scriptures, it's a little bit harder to find value and identity. So we're going to refer to the Scriptures in Numbers chapter 26, verse 52, through 28, verse 15, Luke chapter 3, 1 through 22, Psalm 61, 1 through 8, Proverbs 11, 16 through 15. So Israel has wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years, and now they are gathering up the troops. They've taken a census of all of the men that are 20 years old or older. And it says in verse 64 of chapter 26, not one person on this list had been among those listed in the previous registration taken by Moses and Aaron in the wilderness of Sinai. For the Lord had said of them, they will all die in the wilderness. Not one of them survived except Caleb and Joshua. And um, then as they were, the Lord instructed Moses to divide the land according to the number of people in each tribe, Levi was not going to get land. He was going to be taken care of, the tribe of Levi. And one day in verse 27, there were some daughters of a man, their father, that had died and they were left with nothing. So they came to Moses with that issue and Moses took it to the Lord and the Lord said, they're right, we need to adjust our understanding of inheritance and then they basically lifted women up to a place of inheritance. And because, again, they were created in the image of God, God values women just as much as he values men. There may be a division of responsibilities, but not an inequality. He absolutely values both. So Moses is told by God that you're going to go for a walk and you're not coming back. I'm going to take you up on the mountain. I'm going to show you the promised land. But because of your rebel rebellion, it's time for you to die. And so God, Moses said about God, and this is our understanding of God. Oh, Lord, you are the God who gives breath to all creatures. Again, going back to creation. If you have a doubt about God being responsible for creation, it really does put a lot of holes in the foundation of the truth of God's word. 
So uh, I would again refer to Answers in Genesis, and there are other organizations that do a great job. So uh, pursue that uh, truth. Don't just accept one side as the absolute truth, but pursue both. And that we all have a little bit of a truth meter inside of us. And we just, like, it sounds like truth, but when you hear truth, like really capital letter truth from God, there is a truth meter that goes, yeah, 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 yeah. And the truth of creation is a foundation. It's foundational for what we believe about God and who God is. If he's not creator, what is he? And if he didn't create us, who are we? And what's our purpose if there is no God that's bigger than, than we are? And where's our value coming from? It, it comes from things that come and go. Very, very shaky. But our God was there in the beginning. He is self-existent. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning of all things. He's the end of all things. And he is taking care of us in the middle. So it just gives us a better understanding of who we are and who God is in our relationship. So the Lord describes us as in the scripture, Moses said to the Lord, you need to appoint a new leader because I don't want to leave Israel without a leader. So the community of the Lord will not be like sheep without a shepherd. That's in verse 17 of chapter 27. So the Lord replied, take Joshua, son of Nun, who has the spirit in him. Now remember, Joshua was the assistant of Moses and he stayed faithful to Moses and a lot of times when Moses was done meeting with the Lord in the tent of meeting, the private tent of meeting that Moses had, Joshua would stay behind and meet with the Lord also. And so now it's time for promotion. He was an assistant and now it's time for promotion. So he said in verse 20, the Lord says, transfer some of your authority to him. So the whole community of Israel will obey him. And then Moses did as the Lord commanded. Verse 23, Moses laid his hands on him, Joshua, and commissioned him to lead the people just as the Lord had commanded through Moses. And then in verse 28, the Lord said to Moses, give these instructions to the people of Israel. So there were offerings and sacrifices and festivals, Passover, the unleavened bread, the Feast of Trumpets and the Feast of Tabernacles. And once again, you know, the love language of God. He wants um, us to love him with gifts and to, and to give him all of our, our hearts. He wants to have our heart. He wants to have our mind. And he wants us to speak words of affirmation for him. And he wants to give us he wants us to give him time. Uh, the Sabbath is all about time and uh, acts of service to do things for him. And he says, if you do it for my brothers, you know, like my people, then you're doing it for me. So we're going to go to Luke chapter 3, 1 through 22. And remember, Luke is a physician and he's writing it intellectually. He's done a lot of collecting the testimony and he's heard the eyewitnesses and the eyewitness report. So now he's talking about the time came, uh, a message from God came to John, son of Zechariah. Remember John, the, uh, John was, um, had a miraculous birth. Elizabeth and Zechariah were very, very old and unable to have children. He was living in the wilderness. Verse 3, then John went from place to place on both sides of the Jordan River, preaching that people should be baptized to show that they had repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. Isaiah had spoken of John when he said, he is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Remember the Father's blessing and the Father's prophecy 
Zechariah's prophecy on his little baby when he was eight days old said that he he would be a voice in the wilderness shouting uh, and making a way. And he said he would be a light from heaven. And in verse 6, Isaiah said, Then all people will see the salvation sent from God. So he was prophesying God's word over his little baby. And here it is coming to pass. Verse 7, he says uh, he's, he doesn't have very kind words for the people, the Pharisees and the religious people who are not truly repenting. And then verse 8, prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we're safe, for we are descendants of Abraham. That means nothing, for I tell you, God can create children from Abraham, children of Abraham, from these very stones. Even now the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to sever the root of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked, what should we do? And his answer was to uh, be baptized in repentance. So to repent of their sins and to be baptized. And he was getting people ready for the coming of Jesus Christ in the Jesus Christ ministry. And he said, I baptize you with water in verse 16, but someone is coming who is so much greater than I'm, than I am, so much greater that I'm not even worthy to be his slave and untie the straps of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And then John used many of these warnings as he announced the good news to people. But he also publicly criticized a very high official, Herod Antipas, the ruler of Galilee, for marrying Herodias, his brother's wife, and for many other wrongs he had done. So Herod put John in prison, adding this sin to his many others. So you have a couple of responses to a rebuke. You can uh, rebel against a rebuke, and you can attack the person that is delivering a rebuke, or you can repent and turn from your wicked ways and the evil ways and take it as correction. I taught children and teenagers, be thankful when somebody corrects you because they are helping you to adjust your behavior. I don't like to be corrected, but I, I really don't like to be wrong. So I'd rather be corrected than wrong. I'd rather be corrected than rejected I certainly would rather be corrected than, than uh, be separated from God. And so in verse 21, one day when the crowds were being baptized, Jesus himself was baptized. As he was praying, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit in bodily form descended on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, you are my dearly loved son and you bring me great joy. And... I want to go on to Psalms, chapter 61, verses 1 through 8. God, listen to my cry, hear my prayers. I cry to you for help. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the towering rock of safety. You are my safe refuge, a fortress where my enemies cannot reach me. So our relationship is one of protection, unfailing love, and faithfulness watches over us. I'm going to sing praises to God's name forever as I fulfill my vows each day. I want to encourage you to remember who you are, to remember that you have value, and have an absolutely amazing blessed day.